Hey guys, I'm Mr. Bowman here. We're looking at 2.6 algebra concepts, um, and we're focusing on all the merit questions from the 2018 exam. So, got all the questions from the website. Um, let's jump straight into question number 19. Let me get my maths right. One goes before the nine, right? Um, write this algebraic um, kind of expression as a single fraction in its simplest form. So, let's start just by jotting down the fraction as it is. So there we go, 3c. So the first thing I've noted, 4 is not really a fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to a fraction. So I'm going to change that to 4 over 1 minus b plus 8 all over 3c. I'm, you could, I suppose, in theory, mess around with the denominators and try to manipulate it so they have the same denominator. But this time around, this is a fraction. I'm just going to do the crisscross smiley face method. So I'm going to start off with by going bottom times bottom, which is 3c. We'll go to next by out of habit, 3c. And then I'm going to go across. That there is 12c. And then cross, it's going to be minus 1 times b plus 8c. So those of you who don't put the minus 1 by the bracket, I would suggest are likely to have a little bit of a mistake along the way. Um, so we're now going to expand the top. So we've got 12c minus b minus 8c. And this is where the mistake is. I think a lot of us, I've oh, written x again. I think a lot of us would have had plus 8c here. But don't forget, it's minus 1 times 8c becoming negative 8c. All of that is divided by 3c. I'm now going to simplify the top. 12c minus 8c gets us to 4c. So 4c minus the b divided by 3c. And that there is your simplified fraction, and that there will get you a merit mark. Okay, we are now looking at question number 20, and we've been asked to find an expression for x um, from all of that mess over there. So let's start by writing that equation down. So we've got 3 to the power of 4x plus 1 divided by 9x is equal to 27 to the power of w divided by 3. So the first thing I've noticed in this question, all the base numbers are powers of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the 9 and the 27 to be a power of 3. The numerator there, that's going to be unchanged. But that's going to be, so that 9 is 3 squared to the power of x. And that 27 is 3 cubed. And then that's to the power of w over 3. We can now expand the bracketed parts of our equation. Um, so that's going to be 3, 4x plus 1. That's unchanged. 3, 2x. So that's 2 times x. And then that's going to be 3 to the power of 3 times w over 3. Um, when we're simplifying this, the divide by 3 and the times 3 cancel each other out, leaving us 3 to the power of w. And this here is just division. So I'm going to use the subtraction rule to minus the 2x. It's going to be 3, 4x plus 1 minus 2x. And let's simplify that. That's going to be 3, 2x plus 1 is equal to 3w. So I've now simplified that. I can see I've got the same base number. So I can simply just cancel these out. Cancel, cancel leaving us with 2x plus 1 equals w. So you can only do that if the base number is the same. If the base number was different, say 8 to the power of 2x plus 1 equals 3w, you're going to have to log both sides and then rearrange to have whatever as the subject. But this time around, they're the same, so we're just going to cancel them out. Um, we've been asked to make x the subject, so let's go minus 1, minus 1. So 2x will be equal to w minus 1, divide by 2, divide by 2. x is going to be w minus 1, divided by 2. So a bit of a messy question. Could have been a bit messier if you decided to do the log rules at this step, but you would have got to the same answer. We are now on to question number 21. And straight away I'm seeing a, a um, exponential equation. So I'm just going to jot that down before I even read the question. divided by n. There we go. So let's have a quick read. So the interest is compounded at the end of the year. So that's pretty interesting. They normally don't have that. So that's probably meaning they want um, whole numbers. 
So they don't want, for example, like um, 22.5 years. They would want 23 years or something along those lines. Um, and we've got the equation. That's how it helps us calculate it. And important here, R relates to the percentage value of the interest rate. Um, if they invest $20,000 at 3.85%, how many years will it take for the investment to be 25000 So the A value here, that relates to the, the value of the investment afterwards. So that there is going to be $25,000. The P up front, that normally stands for the principal, 20000 And the R, we've been told, is going to be 3.85%. We're now going to substitute all of those in. They have given us a bit of help and a bit of a hint there, but I don't think we need that. So I'm just going to ignore this part here. Um, so substitute the middle all in. So 25,000 is equal to 20,000 times 1 plus 3.85 divided by 100 to the power of n. So at this stage here, the first thing I'm seeing is to the power of n or an unknown power. As soon as you see an unknown power, you need to be thinking of the log rules and logging both sides of this equation. Um, but let's get into a bit of simplifying before we do that. So let's go divide by 20,000, divide by 20,000. So that's going to be 25,000 divided by 20,000. And that's a fraction which we can simplify later on. And we're then going to go 1 plus 0 0.0385 to the power of n. We simplify this fraction. All the zeros cancel, leaving us with 25 over 20, which is 5 over 4 is equal to 1.0385 to the power of n. So liking this, that's an unknown power. Let's log both sides. So we're going to have log 5 over 4 is equal to log 1.0385 to the power of n. I'm going to move my unknown power to the front. So that means n times log 1.0385 will be equal to log Four over five. I'm now going to divide this. So this log is currently a multiplication. Let's get rid of it by dividing it, and that will leave n by itself. Log 1.0385, and then the same division happens on the other side here. Um, so that's going to be n will be equal to log 5 over 4 divided by log 1.0385. Put that into your calculator, you're going to get 5.91 years, and that had a 2dp rounding. Just noting, when we read the question, it said at the end of each year, so that was telling us whole numbers. So what we're going to do is we're then going to get n is equal to 6 years, and that they had a 0dp rounding. We are now up to question number 22. And this here was actually the easiest question that I think we've looked at at all the merit ones. So question 22, we've been asked to find, so here's an equation, and we've been asked to show that it does not cross the x-axis. Um, so first thing to note is it won't cross the x-axis, or so there'll be no solutions when the discriminant is negative or less than zero. But the key thing is that there, when that's negative, there will be no solutions. So all we have to do for this particular um, question was find out, well, what is the discriminant? Is it positive or negative? And then based on that, we can answer the question if it's negative or not. So there was the original equation. We know that A is equal to two, B is equal to negative five, and C is equal to six. So b squared minus 4ac will be equal to negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 6. That there is going to be 25 minus 48. Straight away I can see the negative part coming up. And that will be equal to negative 23. So because we have a negative discriminant, there is going to be no solution. So because the discriminant... is negative 23, the equation y equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 will have no real solutions.
Yeah, so I just think that was the easiest merit question we've looked at. All of these ones, so a really good one. If it pops up, you know exactly what to do. And our final question, question number 23. So this one was conceptually quite challenging, I thought. Um, but there were some easy steps to get you through it if you could process it in an exam scenario. So they, we've been told this equation has two real solutions. And we were told about one of the solutions and we were asked to find the other. So the way I started this question was I drew a parabola. Um, and I know it's going to be a positive parabola because it's 3x squared. And we've been told one of the solutions, x is equal to 3. So that means one of the x-intercepts will be there. And the other x-intercept, well, we don't know what that is. How we normally go about finding the x-intercepts is we normally factorize. And then the two factors or the two brackets reveal the answers. So one bracket is going to reveal that answer. And another bracket is going to reveal that answer. The issue is we can't factorize because of that k value. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with by writing down the question or the equation. The only other, the only thing we know about this is at one point on the graph, x is equal to 3. So we're going to substitute that into our equation. So at this stage here, when I was doing the question, I genuinely had no idea where I was going with this. And then once I substitute into the equation, I figured out, well, k is the only little left. I can now go ahead and mathematically calculate what k is. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to be 27 plus 3k minus 12 will be equal to 0. 3k plus 15 will be equal to 0. 3k is equal to negative 15. I've forgotten the 1. There you go, negative 15. And then when you divide by 3, divide by 3, k will be equal to negative 5. So that there, or right, or doing this substitution is what triggered the, the process for me. We now know what k is. I'm now going to substitute that back. So therefore, oh gosh, not y, but 3x squared minus 5x minus 12 will be equal to 0. And this here is just a quadratic equation. We're going to go ahead and solve it. And we actually know a bit of information already. One of the brackets should make x equals 3 as an answer. So we're going to start by multiplying it. I'm going to do the grouping method, but you could have solved it during your using any other method that you wanted to. Um, so let's go, that's negative 36 when they multiply together. What multiplies to negative 36 adds to negative 5. I'm thinking it's going to be negative 9 and positive 4. So we're going to carry on up this way. So we've got 3x squared minus 9x plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. I'm now going to factorize the two groups, the first group and the second group. It's going to become 3x and then in brackets x minus 3. And then they have a common bracket, a common number of 4, so that's going to be 4x minus 3 equals 0. So I like this here because I've got the same bracket. And when you solve that, that's going to get you to the 3 answer that we already know about as well. So let's finish off our factorizing. 3x plus 4 will be will go multiplied by x minus 3 will be equal to 0. We now solve our two parts. So 3x plus 4 equal to 0. 3x is equal to minus 4. The first answer for x, negative 4 over 3. And the second answer, this here should verify the solution that we know. So that means the second answer will be 3. So that means our second solution, circled down below, is negative 3 or negative 4 thirds. So that wraps up the merit questions from the 2018 algebraic concepts exams. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, keep working hard, keep practicing.